Okay, so last Saturday we had our first webinar on Fire Pump Rooms and Revit MEP. Although we had a couple of hiccups, uh, it was really good. Thank you for the people who attended it. I hope you know you found it useful. We had the opportunity to share some thoughts and exchange some valuable information. So I give you our first recorded webinar and how to create a Fire Pump Room in Revit MEP. And if you have any questions on this recorded webinar, go ahead and ask them down there in the description. And um, thank you very much for watching. Hi everyone, Alex with Beam It Up. Today I'm going to show you how to create a fire pump room using Revit MEP. We're going to start with an introduction. I'm going to show you all the equipment and accessories. Uh, then we're going to fly through compliance with NFPA 20 and their accepted uh, layouts. And finally, I'm going to guide you step by step on how to create a fire pump room using Revit MEP. See you in Revit. And let's go. So we're first going to do a quick introduction uh, on fire pumps and the fire pump room itself and I'm going to give you a, a quick overview of the components of a fire pump room as far as equipment and accessories. Uh, then we're going to study a little bit the compliance with NFPA 20. We're going to go briefly about that because there's not there's limited time. Um, and then finally you know we're going to uh, generate a, a fire pump room uh, using Revit. Like right here you see a, a, a typical fire pump. Um, here are some of the components. You can see uh, the, the, the suction would come from the left here in the image. So you have typically uh, an eccentric reducer here to, to avoid air pockets uh, that you would see on the, on the right hand side. You see it here. You have a main isolation valve is typically a, an OS and Y valve. Uh, then you have your, your pump itself and which you can see the, the suction and the discharge pressure gauges. You see also an air release at the top of the casing and then at the discharge you have a check valve. So let's take a look at, at those. This, uh, this would be that OS and Y right here. That's an eccentric reducer. This would be the, the casing with the suction and discharge pressure gauges and that air release at the top. Um, something to keep in mind is that the, many people confuse uh, cavitation with those air bubbles. Those are those are different, and we go in depth. And oh, there's still some people joining. I apologize. Uh, let me see how I can let them in. Yeah, welcome to the to the new people that, that just uh, joined. For some reason, this uh, keeps hiding behind. And I don't know who wants to join and, and, and who's in and who's out. But um, anyway, I'll, I'll just uh, continue with the presentation. I think uh, whoever joined, uh, joined and whoever is out, is out. So we're discussing the, some of the components of a fire pump room. Um, we have here also at the discharge of your pump you always need a check valve to prevent the high pressure water to go back of course um, and then you also have a test header in the in the outside wall uh, which will have one fire hose valve every 250 GPM typically uh, we'll look into that a little bit later um, again for for those who just join you would have your your suction line here so this is um, city pressure uh, then you have your main isolation valve which is typically an OS and Y valve then an eccentric reducer to prevent air pockets and then you have your actual pump with a suction and a discharge pressure gauge and an air release um, you obviously need a, a fire pump controller uh, which is gonna set up the, the the starting and stopping of the fire pump those typically are accompanied by an ATS which is an automatic transfer switch and that's gonna dictate whenever you lose uh, regular power how to switch to emergency power 
then you have a jockey pump uh, which is nothing but a pressure maintenance pump the idea for that pressure maintenance pump is that if you have small leaks or you have small fluctuations in pressure then you have that that little pump kicking in and you know equalizing that pressure as opposed to having a thousand GPM fire pump kicking in you know when it's not needed um, and then that that jockey pump also has a small controller and the idea is that you know whenever you have a small leak then you have that pressure maintenance pump kick in but if you do have a fire uh, um, a fire sprinkler operating you have 15 or 20 GPM uh, dropping water then the pressure drop is so high that the that the jockey pump cannot keep up and then the main fire pump would kick in keep going on with the equipment and accessories at the suction you would have a backflow preventer which is a uh, typically two OS and Y valves and then inside of here you have two cam check valves and that's to prevent water going back into the city main and then you have a post indicator valve which in some some jurisdictions gets omitted uh, but it's basically for the fire department to come in here and just close it and really prevent that water to to go back uh, it's another fire pump room you see the layout here typically you obviously need some drains from the casing It'd be imperative to have a floor drain in a fire pump room and then you can see that the main pump uh, has has sensing pipes going to the to the pump controller and the jockey pump also has some sensing lines going to the jockey pump controller so here you see that that casing again with that eccentric reducer the the jockey pump you have your main controller here with the jockey pump controller just fly through an fpa 20 compliance for the purpose of this presentation we didn't talk about the bypass it's a good idea also to have a bypass It's not strictly required but it's highly recommended uh, in case you need to obviously do some maintenance on your on your fire pump or if you for some reason uh, your pump can't operate at least you have CD pressure water going into your system your standpipe on and your sprinklers uh, so NFPA 20 is the standard for the installation of fire pumps and they not only describe all the accessories that that should be included but they also propose a couple of layouts this is uh, suggested this is not mandatory uh, for this presentation we're going to go with the uh, with the first layout the only difference between these two is that in the one on the top you're using this test header which is the one that you saw with the fire hose valves you're using it only for testing in this one you can use it for testing see this would be the main fire pump then out of the fire pump you could test at high pressure but you could also go from the bypass and and connect to that test header and just close this other valve so um, NFPA 20 also uh, lets you know what suction discharge and uh, and other piping sizes have to be so for our for our example we're gonna have a thousand GPM fire pump so our suction line is going to be 8 inches the discharge is going to be 6 inches and then the the number of hoses like I mentioned is typically 250 GPM per hose valve and that's not an absolute truth but at least it's a good rule of thumb you can see 250 1 500 2 750 3 1000 4 you know uh, then 1500 6 but again it's not perfect but it's a good rule of thumb so that you know how much if you're on the outside of a fire pump room you may have a good idea of how many GPM are flowing through that pump and then the the hose header supply pipe is going to be six inches a couple other things from NFPA 20 as I mentioned a couple of times that reducer of the suction should be eccentric to avoid those air pockets so this would be a wrong installation another thing that you want to avoid is to have a horizontal turn immediately before the suction flange uh, because that creates turbulence and it may damage the the impeller so this would be the right way of piping you you can you can however have that turn on a vertical plane so this would be okay as long as you have 10 pipe diameters of length at the at the suction 
So this would be a wrong installation because this is too short. It's less than 10 uh, pipe diameters. Again, that's that, that horizontal turn. You don't want to have it too close. So if you will have a horizontal turn, whether it's an elbow or a T, it has to happen at least 10 pipe diameters of, of developed length before of the suction of the pump. Um, uh, typically you would have mechanical joint underground piping then you have a flange piping at the outlet and then you transition into grooved piping uh, if you haven't yet I, I highly recommend you check the the pipe routing preferences and, and pipe types uh, free videos that we have uploaded on YouTube and uh, that will help you out uh, during all this uh, process here's an example of uh, <laughs> of the right reducer being installed but in the wrong orientation so uh, you know the, the the belly of the reducer has to go to the bottom so I you actually get rid of those uh, air pockets uh, another thing that I wanted to bring up was you know if you want to vote in in other topics regarding fire protection you know it could be either learn more about fire pumps uh, how to size fire pumps we can talk about stamp pipes and fire hose valve systems uh, sprinkler systems or we can learn more uh, you know about NFPA 20 and really get into the weeds of, of things um, or if you just want to mainly focus on on the rabbit side of things uh, I think the advantage of, of having this type of sessions is that you have access to information from a professional engineer it's not only a cat guy who's just you know laying pipe without knowing what's happening on the site um, or a combination of that which would be the ideal right so uh, um, let's jump into Revit uh, right before jumping into Revit I did want to point out that if you ever want to get some some serious training uh, on this topic on this or any other topics uh, you know we we offer different types of trainings not only in Revit and AutoCAD MEP but also you know in plumbing fire protection and soon to come HVAC and electrical and you can check all the topics or, or simply go to book now you can book groups and uh, you know look for the topic that you want to book time on and then simply you know book some time there and eventually we'll have some very specific videos posted for purchasing so you could go for example under uh, our MEP uh, Revit MEP comprehensive uh, section and then look for that specific uh, topic that you want let's say you want HVAC mechanical systems and then you can you'll be able to not only book some time but you will be able to purchase that specific module so you don't have to you know get the whole course so now let's jump into Revit I'm gonna close the PowerPoint presentation and if you can please let me know if you can still see my screen you should see now uh, Revit if you can um, reply to the question that I just posted okay excellent so you know what Let, let's do a quick uh, overview of what we want again this is the suction from the city that backflow preventer that post indicating valve in, in some buildings you would have you will see a backflow preventer post indicating valve and then a fire department connection right after it and that would be attached to that suction line we don't want to do that when we have a fire pump because then you know the, the 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 idea of having a fire department connection is that you have a, a pump truck that comes in and it takes water it, it connects to a fire hydrant at low pressure let's say 40 40 to 60 psi it takes it through the fire pump truck pump it boosts the pressure let's say 100 psi more now you have 140 psi of water uh, going through here and then it would be double boosted you don't want that with a fire pump uh, system so typically in in those systems even though you have uh, a fire department connection close by that line is a separate line which in this case would be this one that is connected at the outlet of the pump so that you either pump from city pressure through your fire pump 
and into your system or you have the already pressurized by the fire pump truck uh, water going directly into your standpipe system in this case this would be my standpipe system okay so um, going a, a little bit into the Revit side of things um, typically the underground piping is that uh, mechanical joint for ductile iron pipe uh, we have a video on that uh, once you go above ground like I mentioned you either have flanged or you can transition into groove uh, fittings we also have a couple of videos in, in both flange and, and, and groove fittings uh, that's our isolation valve right here that's our reducer our fire pump uh, sometimes depending on the suction size of the pump and the discharge you may require a, a concentric increaser or not then that's our check valve to prevent uh, you know backflow of the high pressure water then we have our takeoff to to our um, uh, pump test header right here and then you go to uh, to the system obviously connecting with a T to the line that is coming from the fire department connection and then in, in addition to that you have your your jockey pump right here your jockey pump has to be provided with an, uh, a suction isolation valve and with a discharge isolation valve and check valve and then you connect your suction to your suction line and your discharge to your discharge line okay so let's go ahead and uh, try to replicate this and if you're enjoying the content there are many ways you can support it you can like subscribe and leave a nice comment down there you can spread the word you know share it with your co-workers and relevant social media you can join our patreon community at the address listed on the screen it's also in the description and if you know any small MEP firms that could use BIM implementation services, you can recommend me. Uh, and here, of course, you have your, uh, your main fire pump controller and your jockey pump controller. And you want to leave at least three feet from the face of that controller. That's a national electrical code. Let's just grab this. Let's see if this works like that. Uh, let's grab this and take it out of the way and then we'll just replicate the same thing I'm going to actually copy it from here to here and then simply delete all this and then we'll try to recreate that and I didn't mention it at the beginning but you know, if you have any questions, uh, you can post it on the chat and then we'll try to address them uh, at the end. I um, think we're going to be a little bit tight on, on time, but um, I'll try my best. And if not, uh, I'll probably post a summary of, of this webinar and then you can comment and I'll reply to those comments. Okay, so the first thing you would want to do is to obviously select your your fire pump and in this case um, I have an Aurora pump Aurora pent air is a horizontal split case pump series 481 but you know any any of your preferred manufacturers would do peerless uh, Patterson AC pumps uh, Armstrong all, all good manufacturers as long as it's uh, FM approved and you are listed Let's provide a housekeeping pad first, typically, you know, six inches in height so you can level your pump and keep it out of, uh, you know, flooding. Um, and then ar around your housekeeping pad, you want to have some clearance, right? So uh, I have a video on how to create a piping family and there you can see how to create an extrusion and you'll be able to you know modify the width the length and the height of, of that housekeeping pad to, to your will 
typically want to leave at least six inches uh, around your equipment of concrete and I would leave a little more but you know we work with architects and time and space is always a limitation now that we have our housekeeping pad we want to keep some clearance around it as well so in in this case I'm just going to take this one and I'm going to align it in this direction I'm hitting a L for a line for if anyone's uh, new to this now we have our clearance and obviously I need my my fire pump right so I'm just gonna copy this one for the sake of, of time and then kind of uh, uh, eyeball it here more or less in, in the middle although I, I could um, you know align it but it's not really necessary now let's let's go with our piping right we're not going to replicate this part because that's not part of the fire pump room itself but again this would be mechanical joint uh, which would have some restraints you know wh whenever you have a, an inrush of, of water flow this elbow is going to try to separate so many times they will use some uh, you know mechanical restraints there or a thrust block here which is a just a piece of uh, concrete here to avoid this elbow to separate from the piping um, it's always a good idea to to have a couple of sections ready in this case I don't I don't like having a bunch of sections in my projects because it, it makes it dirty and and slow so what I do is I have one section that I apply a template to that I really like and then I travel with my section wherever I go so in this case I'm going to use this same section and I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees and you know let's look at it from this side actually I think I like the other way better because I like going from left to right because that's how we read right so here in our section we have our suction line coming up again you need to coordinate very closely with your footing um, and then for for those who use work sets you need to make sure that you're in the correct work set in this case this is a combined plumbing slash fire protection um, a model so I have both there in my library I don't have a, a reducer that is of the eccentric type um, so what I do is I, I use a concentric reducer and I make sure that I label in my plans um, I, I call for an eccentric reducer and obviously I have a, a full detail of a fire pump where I specify everything that's required there because you need to be practical about what you are designing and, and drafting and what you're calling for just in a detail to you know to get things done otherwise you you'll never finish um, so for now let's just um, see I need to change my pipe type from mechanical joint to uh, to flange right it has to be a flange and a flange steel uh, and as we saw per NPA 20 requirements we need to have an 8 inch suction line so I need to change from 6 to 8 right here and then take it out and that's my reducer right here right and you're, you're gonna be switching back and forth between different pipe types depending on what you want to connect but uh, in this case I'm just gonna take it a line to my to my suction here one challenge that can present to you if you're actually using an eccentric reducer is that your suction and your discharge won't be aligned so that's why I find it so practical to just use an, a, a concentric reducer here and just call for an eccentric one uh, and I'm gonna do CS for create similar and uh, you know it, it's always helpful it, in my case what I do is I, I have a, a, a perfectly piped pump room and then I just take it from one project to another and then I massage to you know be a little bit more time efficient this is the the textbook uh, layout you will find on the field so many different layouts but as long as you comply with the with the with the basic NFPA 20 requirements you will be fine let's create our bypass 
which would be this 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 part right here so for that I want to go um, grooved select here my my generic piping from here and uh, make sure to change to six inches because the bypass itself doesn't have to be eight I can have a six inch bypass and that you will see in your NAPA 20 pamphlet so I'm going to leave a little space for my for my uh, isolation valve right here and let's uh, let's take it out as a six inch and uh, you can adjust uh, the elevation of that uh, of that bypass a little later for now let's just uh, create it I'm going to extend my section a little bit and it's always a good idea to over uh, over space things at the beginning so you're not struggling with uh, with your pipes and fittings and, and 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 pipe accessories and then you shorten your 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 design to be more more space efficient uh, on your on your bypass you're gonna need an isolation valve a check valve and another isolation valve so that your check valve is isolated in both sides and you can you know whatever type of maintenance you want to do you can do it right there a good valve that I use I'm, I'm a big fan of Victolic uh, so my my valves are typically Victolic so this is the 705W uh, which is a butterfly valve and this is the 717 uh, which is that check valve right so and the reason you're not seeing the the groove couplings here is because this family itself doesn't have the the grooved um, couplings contained like my elbows what I did with my elbows is that I have the generic elbow that comes from Victolic and then I nest the couplings into it so that it's a little bit uh, easier uh, for me but if, for if, if there's any contractors on the call or, or many friends of yours that are contractors it would be better for them to use this type of routing preference in which you have the the groove coupling as a separate element and then your elbow by itself and then if you if you're using that type of, uh, of pipe routing preference what will happen is I'm gonna do create similar here so you can see the valve and then if you place it there you'll see that it does introduce the groove couplings see but in my case I'm a consulting engineer and I need to work as fast as possible to deliver to the architect and that level of, of le that level of development 400 is not in our scope and, and we don't want to get there because that's uh, the contractors uh, responsibility so um, all that to say that I'm fine with my butterfly valve not to sh not showing the the groove coupling because I'm not doing a take off of it so I'm gonna do create similar here and just place a couple of butterfly valves here notice that I'm working mostly out of the 3d to save some time but you could do that from your section or even from your top view um, what happens with the top view is that then you're gonna have your your um, your bypass on top of your main suction line and then you would have to be hiding stuff to connect so you know you need to uh, play it by ear to see what's easier for you so I'm gonna provide a check valve here so I'm doing also create similar and again all this content is uh, is available at the, at the Victolic uh, website they're really good you can also use Tyco Viking you know whatever manufacturer you use as long as they have the the BIM models you can see that this check valve came in uh, the wrong way like if you see the cut sheet and you see a cut through it you'll see that that check valve would be oriented the, the, the wrong way so this is the the correct way of orienting it like this and and now let's uh, let's keep going with our pump so I'm gonna go to my section and I'm gonna take my discharge line you can notice that this uh, the discharge flange of this pump is five inches uh, and I need a six inch discharge so in this particular case I'm gonna need uh, that uh, concentric increaser 
but sometimes you will have a, a discharge pipe of uh, a discharge flange of six inches and then you can just go with that if you are with a thousand GPM pump so uh, I'm gonna draw pipe I need to make sure that I have flange as my pipe type and I want to take that to a six inch I'm just going to ignore that now I'm gonna extend again I'm gonna extend as much as I can so that I'm comfortable yeah apparently it's not finding the the reducer but it doesn't matter because all I all I care is for this to be able to to join my my discharge line so I'm gonna do TE for trim extent I notice that it automatically introduced the groove T uh, we need uh, a check valve at the discharge of our pump yeah there were a bunch of people trying to join to those who were um, waiting there we're pretty much like halfway through um, we did a, um, a quick intro to fire pump rooms and now we're halfway piping our, our actual fire pump uh, room so um, maybe you can catch the, the recording later but uh, we were about to add uh, uh, a check valve of the discharge of our pump so I'm gonna do create similar and again you know you need to be careful in this case notice that th this pipe was um, was a flange pipe and this uh, this particular check valve comes in both it, it comes um, flange and and groove so just for the sake of, of time I'm gonna keep it flange here but this is still oriented the, the wrong way so I have to to fix that and then you shrink your your model a quick summary of where we're at right now for those who just joined that's our backflow preventer post indicator valve this is our suction line uh, that's our flange elbow to the entrance of the building so if you see the the wall for the building would be this one right here then we can transition into groove fittings um, see this this should be out of here and uh, this is our bypass here which needs to have a check valve and two isolation valves to to provide some maintenance to that check valve whenever required uh, then we, we need that uh, reducer uh, this is an eccentric reducer even though I'm showing it as an eccentric here to prevent air pocket uh, and the, at, at the beginning of the presentation I was talking about the you know the suction uh, pressure gauge and the discharge pressure gauge and the air release valve at the top of the casing all that we're not gonna model that because that you typically put in a detail and uh, and you have the contractor provide that uh, but we'll try to be as accurate as possible uh, at our level of development for consulting engineering so at the discharge of your pump depending on the on your on your uh, discharge flange size you may need a, an increaser to go to the required pipe discharge pipe size per NFPA 20 in this case it was a six inch pipe because this is a thousand GPM pump um, so we do need the, the increaser then we have our check valve here which can be grooved or, or flanged and then we connect back with our with our uh, uh, bypass now one thing to keep in mind is that if we're gonna have um, a test header that test header has to be prior to your connection of the of the bypass that's not really a requirement it's a recommendation by NFPA 20 but we're gonna follow it so let's give ourselves a little more space here to come out with that uh, with that test header and let me actually delete this flange and let's go groove uh, all the way up and uh, let me go to my section and then let's the, the test header can also be six inches notice that by default I had it in, in flange so I want to change it to generic this generic again is my grooved and threaded uh, pipe type you can see that in, in in one of the videos for now I'm just gonna extend a little bit here 
and uh, then I'm gonna go to my floor plan and um, I'm gonna hide this pipe notice that this is my my bypass uh, pipe one thing you can do is you can click on it and you can do HH and that's temporarily hiding that and now I have access to my bottom pipe so and then once I'm done I do HR and that's high restore and then it, it'll come back up and that way I do everything with shortcuts so uh, I'll do create similar here and take my again my six inch pipe that is going to be grooved out of this one let me give myself some space to go up and I'm going to go up just head clearance let's say uh, eight, eight feet eight feet should be okay and then I'll keep going this way right introduce notice that it introduces our riser automatically now I'm going to go around the room a little bit and probably I can come out for my test header uh, you need to obviously coordinate with your structural elements so I'm going to take it down to let's say three feet of elevation and then go out to my test header right so it's a good idea to keep your 3d view as a live monitoring thing even even if you're not using it for you know piping which I highly recommend uh, we need to have an isolation valve also for our test header right so I'm gonna place it I'm gonna just copy this one here and I use the create similar command a lot because it saves me a lot of time so that's my valve right there you have to orient your valve for service right so I could put it all the way up here if I wanted to but then you will need a ladder to access it so you know it's all about layout nothing else we can just provide our test header right here so for that I'm gonna I'm gonna create similar here but I'm trying to you know for the sake of time uh, you know get things going so I can connect right here and that's my test header let's keep going here so that's my test header right there we need uh, another isolation valve hopefully you can see the PowerPoint presentation here so this is the layout that we're following right so we have from the city supply right here that's our main isolation valve our fire pump our check valve uh, on the discharge of the fire pump then we have our T to which you one of the one of the legs is going to the test header right here with its isolation valve in this case it's a butterfly valve notice that you can use either OS, OS and Y gate valve or an indicating butterfly valve so that's important the, the butterfly valve have to be indicating um, then you have your test header right there and then past that you have another isolation valve and then this will be your um, your pump bypass which again has a check valve and two isolation valves and then on the on, in parallel to that you have your jockey pump which requires an isolation valve at the, at the suction and then at the discharge it needs the check valve and the isolation valve for service then everything joins and then it goes out to the system to the standpipe system okay so having said that I can close this again and we know that we need that valve right here so I need a little more space so I'm gonna bring my check valve here a little closer to my pump discharge actually now would be a good time to just get rid of this get rid of this and simply just come with your with your flange and, and connect there and again, we're, we're not trying to be uh, uh, perfect here we're trying to be as time efficient uh, but as descriptive as possible we just bring this pipe over and connect here they would have to provide uh, in, in this case you can also have um, a, a flange on one side and grooved on the other side you just have to specify it on the on the valve but again since this family doesn't have the 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 grooved coupling uh, nested in you don't see it right and I don't want to have it nested in because I want to have the ability of of having it even grooved or flanged um, so let me take my T here and 
open up a little space for that other isolation valve so I'm going to do create similar right there place it here and then I can shrink this a little later right now that we are at our, at our discharge the only thing we need to join is that line that is coming from the fire department connection right which is already at high pressure that's why you don't want to connect it at the suction so let's uh, let's go with that line and sometimes you'll see this valve happening on on the on the vertical and this wouldn't be coming out horizontally either this would be coming out vertically but I, I'm going with the textbook example just to be more clear um, notice that I can I can pipe right of right out of my 3d view um, as long as I have my correct pipe type right and then I could uh, change my elevation to let's say nine feet because the other ones at eight feet and if it, for any reason they have to cross I would like to have them at, at separate elevation I notice that I'm still on my 3d view right I have my 3d view active and then if I want to turn I can adjust all this later so I can do my 90 degree turn right here I can get a little closer notice that I'm coming out of my room here but I can adjust that so here I can keep going and um, I could probably do an offset because I want to have my my pump controller somewhere here and I don't want to have water on top of my controller so let's plan for that offset here and uh, then we could come down to let's say one foot of elevation then we're coming out of our building and then you go down underground and you could have done this from the um, from the top view if you wanted to in this case uh, you know my preference was to do it from the 3d view notice that we're still in temporary hide isolate mode so let me do HR to do high restore and that's restoring my bypass I'm coming out of my room here as well so actually it would be a better idea since there's nothing going on between this pipe and this pipe it would be a better idea to connect directly to this other pipe so let's do trim extend right here there it is and then we can heal this gap with trim TR and now we can take this a lot closer to that isolation valve and get our piping within our room okay this section here I don't think we need it anymore so let's take it out of the way it's looking pretty good this would be my discharge line to the standpipe um, now we need to have a, a fire pump controller here and then we'll adjust our, our, our fire department connection line here. So for pump controllers, you know, you can go with fire troll. In, in this case, this one's a torn attack. Uh, the only thing important is that you make sure that it can handle your fire pump horsepower. It has the correct IAC uh, rating and if you are using an automatic uh, transfer switch just make sure you include that in your your specs of course um, let me take this a little bit closer to my pump oh and we're, we're missing our our um, jockey pump as well we need to provide that one let me bring my fire department connection line and notice that if I just do I'm, I'm, I'm hitting here the cursor uh, buttons down but if I do shift and the down arrow you see how my increments are larger so that's something that is that is a very useful tip I believe because you can go uh, you know very large at the beginning and then as you want to get more granular then you just release your shift key and then you can adjust okay 
in this case I want to be aligned with this pipe because that's the one coming from the fire department connection underground it's always good with, with Revit to have a couple of different ways of doing things because it can get a little temperamental so um, let me go to zero feet just to make sure I get my yeah that's my my fitting right there so let's uh, do it with a section here seems like we should be a little bit closer to that and let's align simply let's make sure that we're aligned on the horizontal we are let's see if we're aligned on the vertical um, let me see something and that's what happens when you're doing things live you know I cannot hit pause and find out what's happening a mechanical joint let's let's try to change that to our groove and thread it and let me just exaggerate it yeah yeah sometimes Revit doesn't understand short distances so you have to exaggerate at the beginning and then shorten it it's a little annoying but that's uh, you know have to get over it and keep going so now we're connected and the only thing missing is our jockey pump and jockey pump controller so for that I'm going to go to my floor plan and uh, there I'm going to I'm, I'm just going to grab both my my housekeeping pad and my clearance and for those who join um, late there is um, I shouldn't be putting that in front of the door of course um, but I'll put it like somewhere somewhere around here I think there's enough space um, for those who join a little later um, I have a video on how to create pipe families and the first part of that video uh, we basically create a family that is a box where you can adjust the length the height and the, and, and the width um, so that will allow you to create the this family right here for the housekeeping pads and um, one thing I mentioned that is that you want to keep at least six inches around your equipment I would recommend one foot if you can uh, and the way these families work is that you can adjust the width say, say instead of three six is a uh, uh, four six uh, that would adjust automatically okay so let's keep going we have our pressure maintenance or jockey pump that has to be sitting on top of that pad let me go to a different angle so I'm a little more comfortable and uh, I, typically I, those are uh, ver vertical turbine uh, pumps in this case yes this is a vertical multi-stage Aurora pump the PVM uh, this PVM series is very good they have tons of, of different uh, uh, options to choose from uh, and you always want to select your jockey pump with you know a, a little higher pressure than than your main fire pump because remember the reason why you have that pressure maintenance pump is to keep that pressure high preventing the the main pump from kicking in so I'm gonna do um, I'm just gonna copy this one to save a little time because we we're already at 11 we had a couple of hiccups at the beginning so that would be our jockey pump right then we need to connect suction to suction and discharge to discharge uh, since these are small sizes you want to use um, threaded pipe type we also have a pipe type um, video on that uh, but if you see here in the, in the one that is completed it's coming out of the flange and it's just threaded Right, and then it has our check valve and our, and our isolation valve so for the sake of time let's just uh, keep going here one and a quarter uh, we want to use our threaded well my generic has grooved for two and a half 
and larger and thread it for two inches and smaller so by default this one here is gonna be a threaded elbow you see how I put it there and there's a video also on on how to create that combined pipe type okay so out of that one we want to um, have a, a check valve and an isolation valve so I'm just gonna grab it from here so I don't have to be surfing through the families so I do create similar I come back to this one and that's my check valve right there I need an isolation valve so I do create similar as well and see this is one of those cases where I wish I had oversized that so I didn't waste time so I'm gonna just place it here and I'm gonna enlarge this just to make sure that I have the space to place it and then I can do create similar and simply drop it there and then that has to be tied into my discharge so I'm, I'm pretty tight right there that, that has to be after this isolation valve so I don't have too much space so what I'm gonna do is take this butterfly valve and take it as close as possible to my bypass I want to take my bypass and let me just take this a little bit closer just so that I have the space you know with, with Revit you always want to have a lot more space than you need do your thing and then shrink it because unfortunately even when you have the space Revit doesn't understand it many times so uh, for now I'm just gonna take this as far away from my fitting as possible and then a good trick that I can give you is instead of having a uh, let me do height so that I can access my bottom pipe right this is the one that I want to connect to you see it right there so initially I was looking at this pipe so I had to hide it in plan view so I had access to the bottom pipe and here a good tip would be to create um, a routing preference or a pipe type that has a, a welded outlet takeoff as opposed to uh, a groove fitting because you see how large this fitting is this is not gonna fit here comfortably so what you do is you create a, a, a pipe type in this case I have my one and a quarter and I want to change it from generic to this one that says tap branch and what's that what that's gonna allow me to do is that when I come out of this pipe it makes me look like a fool let's see when I come out of that pipe I don't know what's happening let me let, let's test it out outside that's another thing with, with Revit you know you want to test the same thing to the side and see what happens so fire protection generic fire protection tap branch only so if I want to come out of here see here it works and for some bizarre reason it's not working here so let me see from the border let's see if I take it <laughs> now he liked it anyway this uh, oh this is a two inch we don't want a two inch we want a one and a quarter and now we need to create a little more space for our pump so what I'm gonna do is just uh, take this whole thing and bring it here and it doesn't matter if the clearances are overlapping because those are clearances and then I'm gonna take my check valve And then this elbow, let's just adjust a little bit here. So align, you want to align to this pipe, this pipe, and simply connect. Oh, they were not at the same elevation. So um, what you want to do is make sure that, let's see at which elevation this pipe is. See, this is at six inches and three quarters of an inch. Sometimes you'll get an elevation that is a pain. Uh, you can either adjust it to a nice number, like six inches, or 
if you want to match it to this other pipe a good tip is that you can do control C and then you're copying this elevation and you would paste it into this elevation however I don't want to do that because if I were to do that all these would drop and my main fire pump room will drop and the whole thing or you can introduce an elbow and just tie it into it you know so in this case just for the for the sake of time I'm just gonna grab this elevation right here well let, let's see if we can match it let's see if we can match it if not we'll just um, what was that like a foot and, and something yeah we will be able to match it so this elevation control C so I have it on my clipboard in my clipboard and, and now here control V I'm pasting that elevation and since they are aligned horizontally already I can simply do TR and it will heal that gap so now I have our pump our, our, our pressure maintenance pump discharge piped and we have to do the same thing with uh, the supply the the suction side so let's come out of here obviously we want to go up because we don't want to penetrate our <laughs> our electrical motor there so uh, you know I could do probably seven six you actually wouldn't want to go on top of your electrical motor so maybe let's just go closer to our pump and now we do our elbow here right and here I'll, I'll use again the, the same trick for high restore because this pipe here oh hold on this pipe has to come down so let's just take it down from here draw pipe we knew that it was about one foot so let's just eyeball it for now and let's provide our elbow you gotta make you want to make sure that this angle here is 90 right and then this is the pipe I want to connect to right so it's a little bit uncomfortable because when I, when I click well in this case I am I am selecting the correct one so I could probably do uh, create similar and you need to make sure since now I want to come out with a with a with a tap I need to change my my pipe type to tap right branch only let's grab it from here there we have our tap adjust this a little bit I'm exaggerating just so I can make my connection and then I can shrink it so let's take this a little bit closer and let's do a line from here to here and now we need to make sure that they're both at the same elevation so this elevation is actually one foot and what's this this is also one foot so I can simply do TR and I am almost done all I need is my isolation valve for this and it's the same isolation valve as the previous one so I can place it right here if I wanted to and I'm gonna close my hide restore I'm, I'm gonna close my hiding by doing HR hide restore then I have this valve here that for some reason stayed in memory for a little bit longer than it should uh, so that that should be our pump so one last uh, run around well we need to connect this pipe but we are already over the, the time so water at low pressure let's say 40 psi come he comes here 40 or 50 psi goes through your suction 140 psi let's assume this uh, fire pump is 100 psi so we we had 40 here plus 100 140 psi obviously we're not including the pressure drops here it's uh, just for explanation purposes hey we have oh yeah th th this pipe was the one that we we were using as an example so let's delete it then at our discharge we have 140 psi we're coming out of our system we match we we join our pump bypass oh and we need to connect to our to our standpipe system 
Uh, I mean, this is a very nice pump room, but we need to, to feed our, our fire protection system. So let's see at which elevation am I now? Nine feet, and this pipe is at 10 feet. So you can either introduce a riser here, if it fits. Yeah, 245, so I don't like it. So I'd rather just uh, take this pipe and raise it up a little bit to 10 feet and now I'm just gonna do trim extent and we're done but I'm gonna keep it open for a little bit in case there are some questions that I can address I just realized that I'm missing my main <laughs> isolation valve here so let's uh, let's just put it in there so that it doesn't go out without it uh, and it I just misclick really quick but thankfully we can just oh and then this disappeared anyway uh, any other any other questions there were a couple of questions that I addressed during the webinar that I didn't record but I want to address them here uh, the first one is why the use of group fittings instead of using, uh, you know, welded fittings. The main reason for that is uh, how practical it is. It's way faster to install a group fitting than having a welder, you know, go around the fitting. Uh, and the other question was on the jockey pump, if you needed uh, OS and Y isolation valves. Uh, the isolation valves for the jockey pump don't have to be OS and Y per NFPA 20 requirements themselves. However, if your authority having jurisdiction is requesting to have OS and Y valves, you should probably just go with it. Make sure you have all your valves uh, monitored by a tamper switch that gets connected to the far alarm panel. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button down there, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.